Hello and welcome. You're tuned in for Business Today. I'm Sakshi Patra. Have you ever wondered whether you should buy the same stocks as the top most investors in the world, like Warren Buffett or even Rakesh Chandranwala or Ramesh Tamani, and sell when they actually sell their stocks? Will it make investment really easy for you, or maybe more profitable? To discuss all the pros and cons of copycat investing, today I'm joined by a very special guest. Mr. Vivek Bajaj joins in. He's a co-founder of Stock It right here on the show. Thank you so much, Vivek, for taking the time out. Appreciate you joining in. Thank you. Thank you, Sakshi. So let me start off uh, with the basics on this show. What exactly is copycat investing? If you could expound on that for all our viewers. Sure. So uh, it's called cloning. So you know it's a very standard practice globally, and there are big hedge funds. who are actually okay. doing this so okay. cloning strategy is when you copy exactly the same portfolio or stocks invested by any big investor and just write that investment the concept okay. is very simple that if that person has invested a uh, capital the person must have done good homework right and right. why and it's not possible for us to do that kind of a homework or maybe we don't have that kind of a network to yes. uh, do that kind of a homework so we basically say that okay he is smart fellow so all i need to yeah. do is just copy paste his portfolio which is the most simplest form of uh, engaging yourself in the market obviously sir it has its own challenges but then it it's a it's a practice which is there globally so i mean there's nothing unique about it and it has been practiced for many years globally okay so what exactly are the big advantages or disadvantages of copycat investing since most of the hedge funds are doing it is it uh, possible for you know uh, individual or retail investors to also follow the same strategy what are the advantages and disadvantages really see the advantages as i said the biggest advantage is that uh, in the person you are copying you know that person and you yeah. believe in that philosophy of, which is adopted by that person and you are yeah. okay with investing in the stocks which he or she typically invest in so sure. that's an advantage that you don't have to put that first leg of effort you only need to identify the right person right that needs fair bit of research and convincing on your part that you love that person you know what the person is doing but once you have done that all you need to do is just track what the other person is doing so your initial leg of doing the research deep research of the stock is out of the process so that's a big advantage the okay. disadvantage is that you know all of us have unique dna structure so mm. everyone who will invest has a unique risk appetite has a unique capital base so say rakesh junjunwala he is probably now worth 30000 or 40000 crores yeah. and he he is investing in a stock he has a very different vision for that investment could be for 10 years 15 years or could be for 10 days now you as a uh, investor you probably will have a disposable capital of 5 lakh or 10 lakh now yeah. there is no marriage there because 40000 crores and this is only 5 lakh so obviously your risk appetite will not be as as uh, crisp and clear as his risk appetite will be so that's yeah. where the disconnect will come so i always advise people that you know suno sabki listen to what other people are doing see the stocks okay. where he or she has invested but finally you should also have your own framework and if your framework for that stock and his framework is matching that's a bullseye and you also invest in that stock yeah, while i understand that you say that you know you should listen to all the top investors who you want to follow their style of investing and then perhaps take your own decision based on your own risk appetite as well uh, but uh, for common retail investors who have no idea about stock markets who are perhaps just wanting to understand you know how do i just begin by investing in some stocks and rather than doing my own research even timing of the stocks entry and exit doesn't that also get simpler by just cloning the portfolio of uh, the top investors well uh, uh, it's a double edged sword first of all uh, when will that investor exit you will not come to do okay, okay. until as you have the direct phone number of that investor and he will call <laughs> you <laughs> so see what happens when an investor is exiting if there is a sizable exit then it will get reflected in either block deal or bulk deal of the exchange which may not be the case all the time and um, typically you come to know only when the companies do that quarterly filing and that okay. too if the investor is holding 1% more than 1% stake in the company so yes. we have all these informations in stock it so if you go to investor portfolio you will come to know which investor is holding what and what changes the person has done but then okay. the changes probably would have been done few days earlier and market price would have 
got uh, you know reflected uh, because of his exit so the best way for a retail investor see the whole process of stock identification and stock investing it's not easy process let's be very very realistic um, right. you know i did a video in my youtube channel where i said that if you really want to make a judgment on any one company you have to do 300 hours of research on that company and that is right from basics downloading the annual report to making some kind of an uh, assessment of what the future of that company would be because ultimately it's not just the company it's also the sector which you have to make a call so yeah. when these people make that assessment they take a lot of time in making the assessment so for a retail investor you don't if you don't have too much capital yeah. i will never recommend the strategy uh, uh because i mean you don't have much capital so if if rakesh junjwala is holding 30 stock how does it matter if you have only 5 lakh what will you do with that 30 stock yeah. so i i i humbly submit that with low capital i think mutual fund sib or regular sip in large companies uh which where you can't go wrong you can't go wrong in scfc you can't go wrong in reliance you can't go wrong in icic bank so doing an sip in large cap companies with a low capital makes more sense but if you still want to follow them again repeating the same thing that get the stock ideas from them but finally the entry and exit has to be planned by you it cannot be based on their entry and exit okay so when it comes to you know beginning construction of a stock portfolio for the very first time uh, by first time investors how do you ask them to or how do you advise them to proceed how many stocks should one really look at adding in their portfolio how to go about selecting these stocks what is the kind of diversification that one must do like you talked about how large cap uh, stocks are the safest zones you should begin with that yeah. and how does one really progress So I I bought a concept called mother stocks uh, in market. Okay. So I've okay. identified ten stocks which are like mother stocks where you can't go wrong because you can't go wrong with your mother, right? So there okay. are stocks which have their own business model and they have children. The those stocks have children. For example, SDFC. Now obviously SDFC and SDFC Bank merger is there, so SDFC right. no more mother. Yeah. SDFC Bank has become Bank the mother. Bank is the mother. Yeah. Correct. So. <laughs> they have their own business model and then they have the subsidiaries or the related companies who have who are growing as well so the yeah. best way to start is to start with these mother stocks there are 10 companies and you do start sip with them if you have a capital base of 2 lakh to 1.5 lakh i think yeah. you'll be able to absorb your uh, 10 stocks into this but as your capital size grow and how will the capital size grow either you make money here or yeah. you deploy more capital from your external earnings because you, when you get more confidence about your working then you are okay with deploying more capital from other other areas and put into the market yeah. as you deploy more capital probably from 10 stocks you go to 15 stocks then you go to 25 stocks but suddenly you should not go beyond 25 stocks because it is empirically proved that beyond 25 stocks the benefit of diversification is getting nullified so yeah. a retail investor should target max 25 stocks and for 25 stocks you need to have 10 lakh capital right you can't yeah. invest in 25 stocks with only 2 lakh 3 lakh 4 lakh capital so start right. building that portfolio uh, maybe uh, a 10 10 10 strategy can work that start say today uh, first month only focus on one stock get understanding of that stock then next month take one more stock and add that then third month take one more stock so over a period of 10 months you will have 10 stocks you have an understanding about them you have invested in them see how it is working for you every quarter review if you feel that yes you have total control in this then you add keep adding more capital every quarter so from 10 lakh you go to 15 lakh uh sorry from say 2 lakh to 3 lakh yeah you will go to another five stocks in next quarter then another five stocks so by the end of two years you will be by and far invested in around say 20 25 stocks uh okay. some would be large caps like these mother stocks some will be mid caps because as you gain confidence in the market you'll start identifying mid caps also who yeah. have potential to become large caps so that's where your you know alpha extra alpha will get generated maybe you will be bold enough to add more small caps also um yeah. depending upon the market cycle and maybe you'll add four five small caps in that bucket list of 25 stocks so 10 12 large caps probably 8 to 10 mid caps and 4 to 5 small caps will make your uh, equity portfolio grow
Well, that's an important segregation that you've made in a very simple way that how should one really, you know, as a beginner, go ahead and construct a stock portfolio, which can give you an idea over the long term as to how will you progress and also give you the experience in that as well. But what if, uh, say, for example, if I've chosen these 10 stocks for myself, slowly and gradually putting in, uh, you know, my SIPs or, you know, small investments into these stocks on a periodical basis, but in the middle, something changes in the macro environment there is some news flow that comes that gives a fillip to a particular sector or yeah. a particular stock or a segment of stocks. How should then I, you know, rejig my portfolio? Should I actually jump in right there? Should I, how should I go about it? It's a great question. So to answer that question, it's best to have your portfolio classified into two uh, segments. One is a core portfolio and other is a satellite portfolio. So okay. core portfolio is something which you will not touch irrespective of what news will come or mm -hmm. what is happening in Ukraine, Russia. It doesn't matter to you because your core portfolio belongs to India. And if you believe yeah. in India's story, you will not disturb that core portfolio. So okay. maybe you can have 60% of your capital in core portfolio. 40% can be satellite portfolio. Mm -hmm. There you can be a slightly opportunist where okay. you see that oh, there is something happening in this sector right now. For example, chemical was one point of time an opportunist sector. Textile was an opportunist sector. Uh, there are many opportunist sector right now. So there, your role is to find out what are people talking, uh, what kind of noise is there, what stock could be a beneficiary of that noise. And you get in, make some money or with a stop loss and get out of that. So you can use that 40% to play around with the market. The advantage of that is that you, you make your mind very active with that 40%. Because typically SIP core portfolio will not give you, uh, you know, intelli uh, intellectual kicks. But yeah. once you're there in the market all the time, you always question things which will make your mind sharper. And then because of your activity in this satellite portfolio, you'll be able to manage your core portfolio in a better manner. Okay, understood that. And lastly, I also wanted to ask you, you know, these days we are surrounded with so much of information around us uh, on social media, on WhatsApp messages, tweets, text, telegram, uh, you know, there is no escape and one keeps hearing about some stock tips, some strategies, yeah. what's developing. How does one really save oneself from all the noise and remain focused on these, say, core and the satellite portfolio that I'm going to be creating? How does one do that? So that, that is what differentiates a man from a boy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, obviously you will have noise. We have so many friends, Facebook friends, Twitter friends, everywhere we have friends. But when we have to go out, we know that those five, six, ten core friends who really know you and you really know them, you yeah. want to hang out with them. So in stock market also exactly the same. You will hear so many people talking about so many stocks. So uh, as I say, sunenge sabki karenge apni. So... <laughs> Your framework should give you uh, those 10, 15 ideas. And when you are putting your money, yeah. when you are listening to other people, it's fine. When you are putting your money, you know that those are the 10, 12 friends uh, who are your stocks who have become your friends. You are comfortable putting money there. That's a great uh, way to end with that. Sunye sabki lekin kariye aap apni aur apni research pari bharosa rakhiye. Ye bahut hi achhi baat apne kahi hai. Thank you so much, Vivek. Great speaking to you as always, and thank you for sharing insights into how does one really look at this concept of cloning or portfolio or copycat investing, and what are the pros and cons really, and how should one really ideally create a portfolio that could actually help create wealth in the long term. Thank you so much for all these insights. Thank you. Thank you, Shakshi. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.